Hi, this is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park. I wanted to pass along some tips about mnemonics. Mnemonics is one of my hobbies and I have fun inventing ways to remember things. I'm going to be telling you two stories from my own life about ways that I surprised folks by using mnemonics. So the first story is my mom. Uh, back in 1995, she moved from her house that she'd been living in for 22 years. She moved into an apartment and she had a new phone number. She was really scared that she maybe couldn't remember that phone number. So she called me up on the phone and she said, Phil, I need some memory tricks to remember my new phone number. She goes, I'm scared that I won't be able to remember it. I said, Mom, there's, you had four kids. I'm the youngest kid. The other kids are really wonderful, but they're not interested in mnemonics. So you did the good thing. You called your child who loves mnemonics. So I said, tell me your phone number. I'll tell you how to remember it. So she said, my phone number, my new phone number is 337-4966. I said, Mom, I'm going to help you remember that. I said, the 33 in the beginning, that's like a 33 RPM record. Um, and my mom loves music, so 33 RPM record would be something she could remember. And I said, I want you to visualize that, just like a 33 RPM record. And then the number seven is lucky seven, because you moved out of the house, and now you don't have to call anybody to clean the gutters, because you know the gutters are going to be overflowing with water and rainwater. You don't have to call anybody, because somebody else is taking care of all the details in your apartment. Somebody else takes care of all the, the little things, and um, so it's 337. You're lucky, right? She goes, yeah, I'm lucky. I said, you know the 49 right in the middle of your phone number? I said, did anything happen to you in 1949 that was really happy or maybe maybe wasn't happy, but you'll, you'll remember that year? I said, don't tell me if it wasn't happy. Don't tell me. Just remember 49. She goes, you know, 1949, I got married to your father. It was one of the happiest years of my life. And I said, well, it's sitting right there in the middle of your phone number, 49, the year that you got married to my dad. And um, I said, you'll never be able to forget it. She goes, I can never forget that, 49. So I said, you see the number at the end of the phone number, 66? I said, the 66 is double the 33 in the beginning, 337-4966. I said, mom, do you got it? She goes, yeah, it's 337-4966. I said, you're never going to forget it. I said, just. I said, rehearse it just a couple of times and then you're never going to forget your phone number. Your new phone number, you got it locked into your brain. And uh, so she was really happy about that. I gave, and I was a little lucked out. I lucked out that the, the 49 happened to be a very positive experience for her. Maybe, maybe she got married in 1950 or 48 and then I would say, just think of one year afterwards or one year before, something like that. So here's another mnemonic story. This is from 1984. I was uh, doing some volunteering at a feminist bakery in Washington, D.C., the Women's Community Bakery. And there's a woman there who's an employee, and we were working together doing some packaging, packaging up some stuff. And uh, I said, say, what's your name? And she says, Florence. I said, no, what, what's, I said, you're from Africa. I was originally from Africa. I said, tell me your African name. I really want to remember your African name. She goes, well, it's hard to remember. I said, I don't care if it's hard to remember. Just tell it to me. She goes, well, my name is Tatenda. I said, okay, your name's Tatenda. So I said, is there any way I can remember that name? And we were working together at a table. She was sitting, standing right beside me. We were both standing there at a table, T-A for table. And we were both using 10 fingers, Taten. Ta ten, right? Ten fingers were at the table, and then da means yes. Yes in Russian is da, so it's ta ten da, because I was going to remember her name. She didn't think I was going to remember her name, and I did. So I used ta ten da, and then a week later, she walks in. I said, hey, ta ten da, how are you doing? She goes, how did you remember my name? She was so happy. I said, well, you know, for me, like your African name, like it's, it's something I like, you know? Um, and here in my job, I work in a public library in Tacoma Park. When people tell me their name, I, they tell me sometimes their American name. I said, D tell me what your name is from your country back home. I said, because I like that name better. You know, if your name is Arabic, I, I like the name in Arabic language. I, I, want, I want to greet people by their name so that they feel more included, you know. And it takes extra effort on my part, but like mnemonics is my hobby, you know. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes names are hard to remember, but you just sometimes got to put in the extra effort. So mnemonics can be a fun hobby, but we got to get mnemonics as a hobby throughout the community. We got to be able to share stories like this real regularly 
and a library is a great setting for sharing ideas about how the brain works and memory techniques. So if you have memory techniques that you use, please tell other people. We have to start conversations about this because do you know who's going to be really, really grateful? Is people whose memory starts to decline. They're going to be really, really help, grateful that they can reach for different memory methods that they could use to uh, reduce their stress in their life. So this is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park. I wanted to share with you some tips on mnemonics.